being a superhero is a trial by fire. Who's going to protect the world if not people like you? I'm Jennifer Walters. I'm a lawyer. I have great friends. Can we get some shots, please? It's an emergency. A demanding job. We just started a superhuman law division, and I want you to be the face of it. And a frustrating family. Because we didn't ask for this, but you still got to deal with it. Your transformations are triggered by anger and fear. Those are like the baseline of any woman just existing. Oh. Bruce, kind of feels like if I don't transform, I'm gonna die. Yes, yes, yes. No, no. I just want to be a normal, anonymous lawyer. Can you tell us where She-Hulk is? Jen, you're a story now. Your ass looks crazy right now. You could be an Avenger. Oh, I'm not a superhero. That is for billionaires and narcissists and adult orphans for some reason. Is there anything more depressing than dating in your 30s? Yeah, this is the best date I've had in a while. Oh. Should we split some fries? Let's get those to go. Welcome back, everyone. Big surprise. Marvel dropped the She-Hulk trailer, so we'll break it down. There's a whole bunch of Easter eggs. Obviously, a lot going on with the Hulk. Daredevil is supposed to appear during the series. We have Abomination, a whole bunch of other Marvel characters. I'll be doing videos for all the episodes, so be sure to subscribe to get everything. Starting with the beginning, obviously, it's the New York City landscape because that's where most of the series takes place. She's a lawyer by day for superheroes, people with superpowers, as they kind of tell you during the trailer. Daredevil is kind of the same idea, which is why they both run into each other as lawyers during the day at the courthouse and as vigilantes by night. For those of you asking, this is taking place after the events of Avengers Endgame. This isn't meant to be during the five-year time jump or anything like that. A lot of people wondering when she gets her powers and how she gets her powers, how close to the comic book origin that's going to be. There'll be nine episodes total, and it seems like Bruce Banner's Hulk is a big part of the early parts of this, although he might be in the later episodes too, just teaching her the ins and the outs of how to handle her gamma powers and how to be a Hulk. It also sounds like in his voiceover dialogue, he's trying to inspire her to be a superhero, eventually join the Avengers someday, but she doesn't want to have anything to do with that. Like, who wants to join the Avengers? That's what he means when he says being a superhero is a trial by fire. Who's going to protect the world if not you? There is a car crash that we see during this, and that might have something to do with her origin story. The reason she became She-Hulk in the comics is because she was his cousin, which he references during the trailer, like, hey, cuz, how's it going? She was in the middle of a trial trying to deal with some mobsters. Eventually, they came to kill her. She was injured at the hospital, needed a blood transfusion, and Bruce Banner just happened to be nearby, so she got his gamma abilities through that blood transfusion. Just based on the footage, it seems like they're going to go with that version of the origin story with a couple twists. But when they're intercutting with his voiceover dialogue, you see this giant party with all these troops going crazy with this special weaponry. It seems like She-Hulk rolls up to this party as She-Hulk, like in full She-Hulk form, and she goes crazy at some point, or there's some super villain activity here. There's a couple scenes where you see small groups of people with weapons seeming like they're coming for her, so they're probably going to be some of the antagonist groups during the series. Aside from the Abomination in Titania, they haven't confirmed who all the villains are going to be during the series, but the whole idea is that it's nine episodes long, so episode to episode will feature a couple different trials that she's involved in. So I think most of the villains will show up through those different trials that she's involved with as a lawyer. One of the funny things, though, is you kind of see through the trailer, there's a lot of scenes where she's walking around in broad daylight in full green She-Hulk form, like eight-foot-tall woman just walking around like it's no big deal. Even though She-Hulk can actually go back to normal human form, Unlike Bruce Banner's Hulk, most of her time is spent walking around as actual Hulk. The one difference in the MCU is that post-Endgame, he sort of found a way to become the Professor Hulk version of the character, the chatty version of the Hulk. Normally in the comics, that's not the case. Like, the Professor Hulk era was relatively short. But that's basically what She-Hulk is going to be like. She'll be walking around most of the time in She-Hulk form. But because there's kind of a jokey tone to the series, like it's kind of comedic, they're going to play with the amount that she hulks out throughout different episodes. Like, when Hulk is testing her abilities, she really hulks out, like she starts to get really pissed off and crazy. That's the more powerful, more mindless version of the Hulk inside her. But the rest of the time where you see her walking around about half strength, that's how she'll be through most of the series. And they'll just have jokes about her really going crazy. 
Most of you who are longtime comic book fans will notice that the costume that she's wearing in her She-Hulk form here is comic book accurate. They have a custom version of the Marvel Studios logo that's green for the Hulk. The actual logo for the series is designed like the classic Hulk titles and a bit of a twist on classic lawyer advertisements. Like they're billing the actual full title as She-Hulk Attorney at Law, even though my videos will just be like She-Hulk Episode 1, She-Hulk Episode 2. There's a couple familiar faces at her law firm. Obviously, a lot of her day-to-day -day will be dealing with being She-Hulk while still trying to be a lawyer. Most of you will recognize Tatiana Maslany from shows like Orphan Black. She's a fantastic actress, so I can't wait to see what she does with the character. Probably one of the other biggest things during the trailer, aside from just waiting to see Daredevil as actual Daredevil during the episodes, is them finally revealing what was going on with Emil Blonsky's abomination during the Shang-Chi movie. So it looks like post Endgame, when everybody was blipped back, at some point they built a special prison for superhuman individuals or people with superpowers who are accused of crimes like Abomination. Usually the people that are too powerful to exist in regular prisons are the ones that go to the raft. But it sounds like they've changed that in present day. But now we know what was going on with Wong versus the Abomination during Shang-Chi. So when they were fighting, they seemed kind of like friends. Like Wong was trying to earn his sandwich money. He did earn some money. And he was trying to help Abomination learn to chill out. So now we know where he opened the portal to at the end of their fight. He went back to this facility, and the actual cell that he went back to is designed like the Hulk cell from the first Avengers movie, just like an upgrade from that. And for those of you asking, they did confirm that Wong is coming back for She-Hulk episodes, probably something to do with what he was doing with Abomination during the Shang-Chi movie. One of the huge differences, though, is that we actually see him in human form, like it's actually Tim Roth in human form. One of the big differences from the Abomination in the Hulk is that Abomination cannot change back to human form in the comics. And I talked about this back when the Shang-Chi movie first came out, but obviously they've changed the way that the Abomination looks since the last time we saw him during the Incredible Hulk movie. He's just more comic book accurate now. That's what the fins, the razor sharp teeth are. It just meant it look like Abomination in the comics. It seems like she's going to be responsible for defending these potential supervillains at this prison here. Like the Abomination is one of her big cases that she has to do. Even though they've established Banner is a hero around the world now because he's become Professor Hulk, he started helping people, he's been less destructive, so people like him just in general, they're not expecting him to destroy everything. It seems like the reason he would take her to this remote tropical island to test her gamma abilities and learn about everything is just to prevent as much collateral damage as possible because she doesn't fully understand how her powers work yet. She's not meant to be a scientist like Bruce Banner, though. She's just like a normal lawyer, so she is very intelligent, but she doesn't know a lot of the science of everything. That's where a lot of this comedy comes from between the two of them. Like, he's pulling out these giant binders trying to explain everything in great detail. She's just like, no, 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 we don't have time for this. This is too boring. They confirmed that the special lad that he has is in this tropical remote area, and he's trying to teach her how to hulk out and then come back to human form without completely destroying everything, freak her out with all these blades, trying to get her to hulk out, and then she really goes crazy. It seems like she winds up destroying a bunch of this lab. They're using a couple different types of technology to show her when she's hulked out. Like, they're using practical effects, but they're also using a little bit of CG replacement like they use for the Hulk. Like, the Hulk, when he's hulked out, is full-on CG. But it seems like some of the scenes of her hulking out is meant to be practical, like the old-school 70s Incredible Hulk TV series. They even had the funny clip from the last series with them doing a fake advertisement for her law firm, but doing the iconic Hulk line, You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. Mr. McGee, don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. Don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. When she's making the joke with her friends about not really caring about being an Avenger, she says, oh, that's for billionaires, narcissists. She's talking about Tony Stark, billionaire philanthropist playboy, also a really big narcissist. You could really call most of the Avengers narcissists as well. The joke about adult orphan, you could make about a couple of the characters because most of their parents died when they were young, like even Iron Man's parents died when he was young. Thor's parents got killed, Black Widow was also orphaned at a young age, so really most of the Avengers are adult orphans in some way. Then the big scene of her hooking out in the courtroom and attacking someone is actually her going up against Titania. She's going to be one of the big villains during the series. She's a big She-Hulk villain from the comics. I'm not sure who this green person in the costume is. It just seems like one of the other super villains that she'll run into during the course of her different trials. There are a couple funny scenes of Abomination hooking out in this small space. I'm hoping they're going to have some funny rematch scenes between him and the Bruce Banner version of the Hulk, even though obviously it was the Edward Norton version of the Hulk that he went up against. They're meant to be the same version of the Hulk, it's just a different actor, so maybe they'll have some jokes about that. I'm also hoping that eventually Abomination will show up on the Thunderbolts team. Hopefully there'll be some teasers for that in the back as well. Because they're going to be dealing with so many different supervillains, and that's basically her stock and trade, is finding people with a specific set of skills, quote-unquote, like other supervillains, to do things for her that she can't get the regular Avengers to deal with. 
And they end the trailer on a couple Tinder jokes about her just trying to find someone that she could actually legitimately be with while she's an eight foot tall woman. Like who's going to find eight foot tall woman attractive? And turns out there are actually a lot of dudes out there that love that. We won't do any kind of kink shaming here. If you're into that, that's totally cool. There is a person named Kevin. You could think of that as a Kevin Feige joke, like Kevin Feige shows up on her Tinder profile. All I'll say is that dude that's gonna get with She-Hulk is probably gonna get wrecked and he will probably enjoy every minute of it. Just make sure to take him to the hospital when you're done with him. She-Hulk is gonna wind up smashing that dude something fierce. As far as we can tell, there's no Daredevil in this version of the trailer. They'll probably save him for a little bit later on, but I think that eventually we'll see Matt Murdock in some of the footage just to get people to go crazy. If you have any questions about what's going on with Daredevil during this or the other characters or what's going on with Hulk just in general in Marvel Phase 4, just write it below in the comments. My Obi-Wan Kenobi episode videos will start next week too. That'll be like the next real big thing. So make sure you have alerts enabled for my channel so you don't miss that. Everyone click here for that brand new Thor Love and Thunder first look video of the Marvel Gods versus Gore the God Butcher and click here for my other really big She-Hulk trailer video. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.